First, I offer my unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipful Dikshi Buddha Dev. Nichalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pat, Astotra Sat Shri Srimad, Shilabhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, and the same unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipful Shiksha Guru Dev, Nichalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pat, Astotra Sat Shri Srimad, Shilabhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. To Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Goswami Maharaj, to all of our Guru Varga and all the assembled devotees. Mantrika mm -hmm. Songbook. So thank you very much for coming this morning. We're discussing Bhajan Rahasya, or the treasure house of the deep, intimate secrets of Bhajan. What is bhajan? What is sri? Sri bhajan rahasya. I remember when, back in 1967, Prabhupada was starting the Chaitanya Charitamrita classes every morning, and he explained what is Chaita, what is Chaitanya, what is Charita, what is Charitamrita. So similarly, sri. There's all kinds of sris. There's the six opulences of this material world, strength, beauty, knowledge, wealth, renunciation. There's the eight, there's the sris or beauties of the eight mystic powers. There are spiritual sris of transcendental knowledge and renunciation and those other aspects of the six. Then there's sri meaning uh, goddess of fortune. There are unlimited goddesses of fortune or consorts of Lord Narayan of Vaikuntha <coughs> embodied within Srimati Radhika. And Sri also means Sriya or the secret treasure. Our Prabhupada uh, transliterates this word as treasure and treasures are usually locked and hidden. So Srila Gurudev opened that by explaining that Shriya also means beauty, the beauty of the creeper of Srimati Radhika, meaning her gopis and specifically in our connection, the maid servants, one of whom is Kamal Manjari, that is Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, the author of Sri Bhajan Rahasya. So Bhajan means, of course, there are the songs, 
singing the glories and the prayers to the Lord and his associates. When I asked Srila Gurudev once, you mentioned bhajan so often, what is the exact meaning of bhajan? He said, anything that you see, water, a flower, a person, a mountain, it reminds you of the deep secrets of Radha and Krishna, their philosophy and their pastimes. So we're giving a very small review of yesterday and within the review there's so many new things since the overview that we discussed yesterday is in fact discussed throughout the book. Not a book, but O oh Prabhu, you're not a book, you are Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur yourself, you're Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu yourself, Radha Krishna and your associates. Please shower your mercy upon all of us here this morning so that we can realize the reality of what you're personally telling us and so that we can be free from all doubts. Only we want doubts in matter. So throughout the book, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur is discussing the Hare Krishna mantra, which is the not only the principal dharma, but the real, only real dharma or religious principle or essence of the function of the living entity. And all other dharmas, dharma means that which is inseparable from the living being. All other dharmas for advancement of life are all secondary and insignificant in comparison to bhakti yoga, which is in principle the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. And Sri Krishna Sankirtan, which as we mentioned yesterday, includes the bhajans and hearing Harikata from Shrestha Sadhus, topmost Sadhus. So, there are eight pairs. I think Vasanti right now is at the um, photo shop place trying to get uh, photocopies of that chart that I showed you letter, uh, yesterday, within the center of which is the Hare Krishna mantra in the eight pairs. Then each pair, first pair, second pair, Hare Krishna, um, correlates with the first verse of Shikshastakam prayers, the eight prayers in glorification of the holy name left by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It also correlates with the various stages of bhakti beginning with shraddha. So the first pair is shraddha. We mentioned yesterday uh, as quoted in um, Chaitanya Charitamrita and Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Bindu, the um, strong faith that simply by engagement, conviction, that simply by engagement in the activities of bhakti yoga, or in this connection of the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra, all other subsidiary activities are included. In fact, in these first few verses of the first chapter, which is called Pratam Yam Sadhana, Pratam means first, which corresponds also with the Nishanta Leela pastimes of Radha and Krishna, the pre-dawn pastimes. So there, Shraddha is also explained as faith in the words of Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. Also, Shraddha is uh, synonymous with the Bhakti Lata Bij or the um, seed of the creeper, sorry, not the, the, the creeper, the beginning of the creeper of bhakti, which is faith in the words of Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra, 
with the turning from being the Vimuk Jiva or Jiva averse to Krishna to being what's the word? Unmuk hmm? means turning towards Krishna. So the desire to serve Krishna is the internal manifestation of Shraddha. So those are the three explanations we get for Shraddha. In the first few verses, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur explains that all other methods for attaining perfection, like yoga, meditation, uh, archan, they're very difficult to perform. And if there's any mistake, one does not get the results. Say if there's a mistake in meditation or in the yoga principles, you don't get the attainment. Whether, whereas there's no consideration of faults in the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra, and there's continual progress as long as one follows the rules and regulations. That is, what are the rules and regulations? They're described. That is, in the association of devotees and trying to avoid the ten offenses which gradually disappear as one is in the good association. Archan is important because it helps in purifying our conduct, our behavior, our habits for gradually getting advancement in bhakti. It also helps become free from lust and other impediments. But there's a rule, Srila Gurudev explains in his commentary here in the first few verses, the rule for Archan is that it comes to its perfection by the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. Srila Bhakti Thakur also explains in these first few verses that whatever was attained in previous ages, in Satya Yuga, the age where people lived for 100,000 years, by the performance of meditation, in Treta Yuga, when Lord Ramchandra appeared, and when people lived for 10,000 years, when the uh, process was, what? Hmm? Jagya, sacrifice. In Dwarpa Yuga, when people lived for 1,000 years, when Krishna appeared, and when the principal dharma for the age was Archan, or elaborate temple worship, all of the results of all of those processes are achieved simply by the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. There's two kinds of mantra chanting. One is Nam Kirtan and one is Nam Smaran. And both of them are superior to all other methods of achieving perfection. And Nam Kirtan is superior to Nam Smaran until one comes to the stage of Bhav. When his Smaran is full with his realization of his Siddha Deha, his spiritual form, and he's qualified to meditate purely without imagination on the eightfold daily pastimes of Radha and Krishna and also experience his own self being engaged in that service. There are three stages of consciousness when one comes to, jat, to be a jata bhav sadak, or when he's realizing his service in Astakali Lila, the Eightfold Pastimes. One of these stages of consciousness is called internal consciousness, antar dasha, as opposed to dasa. It's not dasa, which means servant. It's dasha, which means stage. 
antar dasha, internal consciousness, where he totally forgets this bodily identity, and he's completely absorbed in his identity as so-and-so maidservants under the guidance of Rupa Manjari and the other gopis. Then, after some time, he loses that internal consciousness and comes to semi-internal external consciousness where he's still remembering the pastimes but not experiencing himself in it and he's also not experiencing himself in his external identity rather he's weeping and weeping that that scene and his service in that scene will return and then there's external consciousness where he's also feeling intense separation for what he has just seen, but he's able to function within this world. So in, in the stage of Shraddha, which is the first chapter of Bhajana Rahasya, and the first um, stage of Sada, Pratam Yam Sada, which is the first period of Radha and Krishna's Leela called Nishanta Leela that is the pre-dawn pastimes of Radha and Krishna when they're just waking up from sleep. So during that period the Jatarati Sadak, the Bhav Sadak is meditating on Radha and Krishna waking up the maid servants serving them um, feeding them some nectar, piyush padika, and uh, the gopis doing arati, and Radha and Krishna pretending to sleep and not paying attention to them, and then Vrinda becoming worried that it's becoming soon sunrise and what to do. So she's engaging all the birds in singing to Radha and Krishna that they should wake up and immediately go home. So that's the meditation during this first, um, first pair of the Hare Krishna mantra, Hare Krishna, where the Ajata, Rati Sadak, he's doing the first verse of Shikshastaka, which is what? Cheto Dharva. Does everybody have a songbook? If you can kindly bring your songbooks starting tomorrow. And what page is it on? Um, pages 329. 329. Cheto Bhava Mahadava Vidya Bajujivanam Anandam Budivartanam Pratipadam Purnam Vitaswadanam Sarvatma Snapanam Param Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtanam So the first chapter is the first phrase of this first verse of Shikshastaka, Cheto Dharpana Marjana, the Ajata Rati Sadak, those Sadaks who are anywhere from Shraddha to Asakti before he reaches the stage of Bhav, he's, he's in Shraddha now and he's engaged in cleansing the dust of the mirror of his heart by following the uh, bhajan, what is it? Um, the, uh, when you do the angas of bhajan, following the limbs of bhakti, he's cleansing the dust from the mirror of his heart, gradually becoming free. He's full with the narthas but he's gradually becoming free. We might as well discuss the anarthas since we're in the first chapter. There are four kinds of anarthas. 
The first kind is offenses. There are four kinds of offenses. I'm sorry? Okay. The first is Swarup Brahm. That is the illusion. Brahm means illusion about the Swarup or the form and nature of God. Is he personal? Is he impersonal? What are his characteristics and features? What is the tattva or fundamental truth of God? So his incarnations, his expansions, his energies. But there is a brahm, an illusion about that. Perhaps he's impersonal. Perhaps he's equal to all the demigods. Or hey, perhaps I'm Krishna. I'm God. As Krishna told Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita, it's due to desire to be God and enviousness of God that we came to this material world. That's 727 Bhagavad Gita. And then the swarup about myself. I'm in illusion about that, my own swarup. Am I unlimited? Am I this body? Am I this mind? Or am I a G illusion about that? And then there's illusion about the process of attaining perfection. And what is the perfection? Perhaps it's that we all merge and become one, and I'm you and you're me. Or perhaps it's material opulences. So I'm an illusion about the perfection and the process to attain it. Then offenses. Asad Trishna means Asad means temporary and Trishna means taste. I have a taste for temporary enjoyment in this material world and also in the heavenly planets. I want godly opulences. So therefore, I'll engage in uh, pious activities to attain heavenly planets, or I'll engage in giving in charity so that in my next life I'll be rich. I'll uh, open up hospitals so that in my next life I'll be healthy. Asad Trishna. Then offenses? Hmm? Weakness of heart is another section. In a Satrishna, impersonal happiness? Mukti, impersonal happiness. I have a taste for, I'm so frustrated in trying to enjoy the material world and looking for heavenly enjoyment. There's always miseries in that. So let me just give up my individual identity and merge with the unlimited supreme. Mystic powers, mystic powers. I want pleasure in mystic powers. There are eight kinds of mystic powers. One is I can become um, lighter than an atom. I can become heavier than a planet. I become lighter like Hanuman. He could fly. So I can fly. I can travel to another planet without the use of a spaceship. I can reach out to another planet and get any fruit that I want, just like that. I can bring anyone under my control. So in this way, there are various kinds of mystic perfections. Then, offenses. There are four kinds of offenses. One is offense to the holy name. There are ten kinds of offenses. That is, offense to the pure devotees who are preaching the glories of the holy name is the first offense. Thinking the Lord's names are equal to the demigods' names, or the demigods' names are independent of the Lord's names is the second offense. Disobeying the orders of the spiritual master and considering him an ordinary person is the third offense. Blaspheming the Vedic literatures or the literatures in pursuance of the Vedic version is the fourth offense. Considering the glories of the Lord to be imaginary 
is the fifth offense, committing sin on the strength of chanting, um, considering the chanting, the results of the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra to be um, equal to pious activities of going to the heavenly planets and getting godly opulences or mystic powers or horse sacrifices for great wealth and then preaching the glories of the Lord to the faithless which is a waste of time that doesn't mean that we don't go out and preach to non-devotees it means that if somebody's not interested the time that it takes to waste and trying to convince that person who keeps coming back with arguments like so-called Christians can be better spent in convincing many innocent people who readily accept. And the tenth offense is to maintain material attachments despite hearing so many instructions on the glories of the Holy Name. So there, these are defenses to the holy name and to be inattentive while chanting the holy name. There's offenses to the Dom, ten kinds of offenses to the Dom, like for example considering the Dom uh, a material place. Oh, how dirty. I don't want to go there, it's so dirty. Or uh, offending the residents of the Dom, considering the different living entities of the Dom to be ordinary and offending them. Uh, there's offenses to jivas, even hurting any jivas, any living entities by body, mind, or words, that's also an offense. Also offense. So there's four kinds of offenses, and offenses are one of the four kinds of anarthas. So in the beginning stage of bhakti, starting from Shraddha, Chaito Darpana Marjanam, the dust from the mirror, huh? Oh yes, thank you. The other kind of anartha is Hridai Durbalya. Durbalya means weakness, and Hridai means heart. So there are various kinds of weakness of the heart. For example, um, hypocrisy, a, pre a pretentious devotee. With my words I say something, but with my activities I do another thing. Um, I show that I'm very advanced, I'm very renounced. Like for example, Gurudev told the story of one um, neophyte devotee who kept showing off that I'm fasting on all the holidays like uh, Akadasi and Janmastami. I don't touch anything. And I bathe three times a day in the Jamuna. Near Jal, I don't drink anything. But when he bathes in the Jamuna, he makes sure to take big gulps of water when nobody's seeing. But what happened was nobody can hide from Krishna and ultimately anybody. He's always caught. So one day when he was taking a big gulp, of water in the Jamuna, a thornfish swam into his mouth and he started screaming and ran onto the shore and started rolling in pain and everybody found out about him. So pretentiousness and hypocrisy and envy of others' uh, fortune in bhakti or in anything. So these are four kinds of anartas that are begin to be relieved and disappear at the stage of Shraddha. There is one stage that becomes before Shraddha, which is a very simple word. In, uh, in one of the early verses of this first chapter, I think it's verse 12, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, as we mentioned yesterday, selects various verses to comment on. And one of the verses is a verse by Srila Rupa Goswami, that famous verse that Srila Gurudev always quotes, Ado Shraddha Tato Sadhu Sangha, which gives the various stages of bhakti. 
So the word ado is very important. It seems like a do only means beginning with. Beginning with. Ado. But actually, ado is very deep. Ado includes millions of lives of collecting sucretes and uh, doing un unknowingly performing some devotional activity and having some connection with sadhus. For example, Gurudev tells the story of one devotee who is in Vrindavan and he's singing Radhe Radhe Radhe, Jai 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 Sri Radhe and Hare Krishna and he's going door to door begging alms. And in one door, the lady is cleaning with a very dirty, filthy, oily rag. She's wiping cow dung in her room. And um, so she sees that he's begging alms and she says, get out of here and if you come back, I'll beat you with my stick. So he comes back the next day chanting and begging on. <coughs> and she threw her oily rag, filthy rag at him. So he was so happy. He took it home, cleaned it, washed it in the jamuna, scrubbed it really nicely, ripped it into <coughs> different small pieces, made it into ghee wicks. Somebody else had donated some ghee. So he offered arati with that cloth that he turned into a giwik. And the next day he returned chanting, knocking at her door. And she said, oh, thank you for coming. I was waiting for you. Here's a japati. So by performing that spiritual pious activity of serving a sadhu, even unknowingly, she was advancing. So in that way, over many, many births, of performing, collecting sukutis, spiritual pious med merits, one comes to uh, shraddha. And then uh, one comes again to sadhu sangha, and he engages in bhajana kriya. Am I going too fast, too slow, too anything? <laughs> Any comments? So that I can Ado, serve you better. Ado means the initial contact with bhakti. Correct? Initial contact with bhakti, but it may be many initial contacts with uh, bhakti. Accumulation. Accumulation, yes. So in uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Bindu, it's stated that after many millions of births of collecting these sukritis, one comes in serious contact with bhakta, with the devotee, and by his association one gets bhakti. So that's coming from Shraddha and Sadhu Sangha. So, um, in this first chapter, the first couple of verses are glorification, as we mentioned yesterday, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is the initiator of Sri Krishna Sankirtan. Sankirtan. As we discussed yesterday, the first verse explains how he's with his angas and upangas, his uh, uh, parts and his parts of parts, and his parshada, his associates, and his sharp weapon of the Hare Krishna mantra. And anyone who's intelligent, those who are intelligent of sufficient brain substance, they follow him and engage in the congregational chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. And those who don't, their intelligence is made of cow dung. He doesn't have any intelligence. So then in the next verse, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur chose verses that proved that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna himself. And he quotes verses from Chaitanya Charitamrita, from Mahabharata, from Jiva Goswami, foretelling that in the age of Kali, the Lord will come in this golden complexion 
and his activity will be Harinam Sankirtan. Also Gargacharya, when he was foretelling the life of Krishna, when Nanda Baba brought Krishna and Balaram to Gargacharya, or rather Gargacharya came to the home of Nanda Baba, he said that this boy appeared in previous ages, and in previous ages he was different colors. He was red, he was white, he was yellow, and now he was black. So in this way, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is quoting several scriptures proving that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself coming to give the highest perfection what no other incarnation gave before since the previous day of Brahma when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and gave this Anarpi the Chiring Charat what nobody ever gave before that is the maid service of Srimati Radhika through the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. Also, there is a doubt that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually came in Kali Yuga because in the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the seventh canto, Prahlad Maharaj addresses the Lord that you are three yuga. You come in three yugas. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was at the home of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and Sarvabhoma saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's ecstatic feelings manifested, his astakaliya bhavs, um, trembling, horripilation, uh, flowing of tears, hair standing on end, skin changing color, stuttering, he was thinking that these symptoms can only be in the bodies of transcendental persons like the gopis. But he couldn't be God because God only comes in three yugas. So he told Gopinath Acharya, his relative, that he couldn't be God. So Gopinath Acharya told him that I think your intelligence is bewildered by dry logic and Mayavadi philosophy. Because when it states that God is Tri Yuga, it means that his Leela avatars only come in three Yugas. But there's a Yuga avatar in every Yuga. So the Yuga avatar for Kali Yuga is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because no other, uh, there's no other Yuga avatars. There's always a golden avatar but usually it's Gore Narayan. Narayan comes in that golden form. So now, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came in Kali Yuga to give the Dharma for this age, which is the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave it with the addition of Brajbhakti, and particularly the mood of the gopis. So in the first the first pair of the chanting, Hare Krishna, the Ajata Bhav Sadak is cleansing his heart in the association of devotees. And the Jata Bhav Sadak is meditating on the Nishanta Leela pastimes of Radha and Krishna. And then in the second the second pairs, the Ajata Rati Sadak, the Sadak who has not reached Bhav, he's, uh, he's engaged in the next phrase of the first verse of Shikshastakam. Is this all clear? Everybody's following the thread? So the first one is Hare Krishna, and the next one is Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, the next phrase in Cheto Dharpa Namarjanam is, the first is, the cleansing of the dust from the mirror of the heart. And the next phrase is, Bhava Maha Davagani Nirvapanam. That is the fire of conditioned life, of repeated birth 
and death is extinguished. So now more anarthas are disappearing and he's coming to the stages, three stages, that within the stage of Sadhu Sangha, he's coming to Anartha Nivriti, which means the gradual clearance of these aforementioned Anarthas. And also, he's coming gradually to the stage of steadiness. His bhakti has been anistha bhakti, or unsteady, because it's mixed with so many anarthas. So the qualities of unsteady bhakti are that sometimes his enthusiasm is there, and sometimes he's totally disinterested. Sometimes he thinks about being renounced, and sometimes he thinks of marriage. Both a married person and a renounced person have equal access towards bhakti. Like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had so many married uh, devotees. But if one is wavering, should I get married? After all, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates were married. But then again, they gave it up. So maybe I should just skip that part and just give it up. And then there were, maybe I should just be renounced because so-and-so was renounced, but then again, so-and-so was married. And if I don't get married now and be renounced now, then maybe my material desires will come up later and I'll end up falling down from renunciation. So he's so busy going back and forth that he doesn't have the wherewithal to engage in the moods of bhakti. So um, he's going back and forth. His enthusiasm is thick and thin, and he's going back and forth between renunciation and marriage life. He can't seem to uh, follow his vows. I'll chant 64 va uh, rounds. I vow to. Well, the next day I got sick, so I had a headache, so I couldn't chant the rounds, so maybe I should reduce the number of rounds. So he's wavering in his... In his um, vows, and he can't follow the principles. He can't do what he should do. He can't stop doing what he shouldn't do, and he can't do what he should I can't stop video games. I can't help it. What can I do? Nobody's looking after all. And maybe Krishna's not even looking. How do I know? Because he doesn't have that much faith in Krishna, that Krishna's looking and giving him the punishment. Then also Taranga Rangani, he's riding on the waves of bhakti, one meaning of which is, I have a little bit of advancement, and so I'm getting, not, not by my advancement, but by the external features which can be confused with advancement. I gave a really super class, and somebody gave me $100. Wow, yeah, that showed that I gave a good class. Let's see, how should I use that? <laughs> so riding on the waves of material enjoyment in the name of bhakti. In fact, uh, Shula Bharti Maharaj explained one day that the uh, fame and adoration that's coming with my bhakti could actually mean that I have no bhakti especially if I get the slightest bit interested in it. When Madhavendra Puri saw that he was going to have fame because Kirishura Gopinath had saved him some sweet rice and he thought the whole town is going to find out about it, he immediately left the town and went to another town to avoid that glorification. So. Baba Maha Davagni Nirvapanam. The next phrase in the first verse of Shikshastakam includes the three stages of bhakti, Sadhu Sangha, Anartha Navriti, and coming to Nistha. That's the second stage, second chapter of Bhajan Rahasya. 
the second stage of chanting. Then one comes to the third stage. He has the three. Sadhu Sangha, Anartana Vritti, and he's gradually coming to Nista. Yeah, that's the Jati. Uh, that's Ajati. Oh, Ajati. Sorry, and the Jati. The Jat, the Jati, the Jata, Rati, Sadak is meditating on um, Krishna is Radha and Krishna go home now. Um, the Kakati monkey has cried out, Jatila is coming. And so Radha and Krishna have to separate. And they both go to their individual homes. And Radharani is uh, getting dressed. She's, she's waking up, she's bathing, she's um, getting dressed by her maidservants, and she's on her way to going to cook. And Krishna is also waking up from his mother, is giving him some, some butter and misery, like that. He's meditating on those next the next uh, uh, yam. yam of Radha and Krishna's Leela. And then the third, Which time is that? the time so is 6.30 8.24. Yeah. Okay. So then in the third one pair, one more question. Hmm? One more question. Sadhu Sangha, Anatomy Vritti, and this um, Bhajana Kriya. He's also engaged in, thank you, yeah. Bhajana Kriya. And he's gradually coming. Yeah. In the third, well I'm just answering that, that okay. the third one is Nista. Okay. He actually enters into Nista in the third pair. My question is, first we after many lifetimes, so called the Gandhi enters Shraddha stage, we have faith. Then we come into a real Sadhu Sangha, that means association with skilled Aishrama. Then we obtain initiation, is that correct? It should be. If we obtain before that stage, that we really are in Sadhu Sangha. I'm that sorry? Is when we obtain Sadhu Sangha, it is described as Sri Krishna Sangha, we talk to the Sri Krishna Sangha. You initiation. speak louder. That time yeah. initiation will take place. Mm -hmm. yeah, before that time, there is some type of initiation. What type of initiation is there? Well, I think you were all there last night. Blowing, the Blowing air in the ear. Is that what you were looking for? I was hoping that you would touch that one. Okay, well, thank you for touching it. Repeat it? Oh, uh, one, if one gets initiated before the stage of Sadhu Sangha, before the stage of meeting a Shrestha Bhakta, then he can collect Sukritis, but he's not actually getting the real seed, the Bhakti Lata Bij and the, the seed of Shuddha Nam, but he's collecting Sukritis. This is also explained in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Bindu, and Srila Bharti Maharaj gave it a picturesque summary of the guru is blowing air in the ear of the disciple by giving him the mantra. In Shrestha Sadhu Sangha, uh, one may be initiated technically or not initiated technically, but uh, just the hearing, just the faith, he's, he's getting that, uh, that, that beach, that seed of that pure name from the sadhu. And then when he gets initiated, it's like, that's why when those of us who went to Shilabharti Maharaj's 
initiation, I'm not sorry, darshan yesterday morning, there were some devotees who were expressing a desire for initiation. So he said, um, don't t take initiation right away. I waited 11 years. I was first sure that yes, this is what I want, that I'm not interested in any anartas. I was getting purified so that I knew that this is actually what I want and this is the person I want. And then when I was sure, then I took initiation. There was some uh, young men who were disciples of uh, Swami Sachidananda, Sachi that long beard one, Mayavadi teacher, and he started to come to um, our Prabhupada's morning walks in 1968, and they expressed the desire for initiation from our Prabhupada. And he said, if you take initiation on sentiment today, then you will leave on sentiment tomorrow. So first understand the philosophy and then take initiation. Uh, the field, the seed needs to be planted in a field that is cultivatable. That uh, the, the land is already cultivated so that the seed will bear fruit. So then one comes to the third pair of the Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. So at this time, the Jata or Bhav Sadak, the Jata Bhav Sadak meditates on Krishna going cow herding. All of Krishna's friends are going cow herding with him and his parents are there and they're telling Krishna not to go or make sure you have everything you need and Krishna's telling them don't worry everything is there in the forest and Radharani and her gopis are sharing sidelong glances with Krishna and finally he goes cow herding and so there's feelings of separation. And the A Jata Rati Sadak, he has come now to the stage of Nistha, or steadiness, which in the first verse of Sri Shikshastakam is the third phrase, Shreya Koitava Chandra Kavataranam. Shreya Koyeva Chandra Kavataranam. Now the um, Shreya Koyeva, the the uh, what is it? The lotus flower of auspiciousness is beginning to bloom, to blossom, and it also correlates with the third verse of Shikshastika. What is the second verse of Shikshastakam? Nam Nam Akari Bahuda. That means, going back a bit, the Ajati Rati Sadak, who's um, practicing according to the second pair of the holy name, he's coming to understand that Nam and Nami are one that all the Lord's potencies are there in the Holy Name. Let's say that together. Nam nam akari bahuda nija sarva shaktis tatra tida niyamata smarane nakala etadrasi tava kripa bhagavan mamapi dur daivami so, in that stage, he's coming to realize that all the Lord's, or not realize, but he's coming to understand that all the Lord's potencies are invested in the holy names according to the form. That is, there's the original form of the Lord, and then his expansions, and they all have various degrees of the Lord's original potency. So according to the form of the Lord, the name has the same potency. 
Nam Namakari Bohudani just Sarva Shaktis. All of his powers are there. Just as Gurudev would say at the time of initiation, just as the Lord can, in one moment, he can create many universes, in the next second destroy them all, in the next second recreate them all, so the Holy Name has that same power. Then, um, he's becoming humble by, by understanding the power of the Lord in the Holy Name. He's feeling bad that although this is true, that all of your mercy is invested in the Holy Name, unfortunately for me, and he starts lamenting at this time, I have no attraction for that. So his anarthas are clearing, and he's coming to the stage of fixed determination, <coughs> coming to Nisla by his engagement in bhajan and the activities of bhajan. What is that called? Bhajan Kriya, the limbs of bhakti. He's engaging in the 64 or the nine limbs of bhakti under the guidance of Guru and Vaishnavas and engaging in such bhajan. Now he's realizing, first I was singing the bhajans and I was thinking the tunes are really great and the words are really far out and I'm gradually beginning to even memorize them. And I wonder if anybody liked when I just led the kirtan. And then gradually, he comes to, as he's getting cleared from Anartas, he's gradually understanding what he's singing, that this applies to me, that I'm the one who's the wretched fallen fool, and I need your mercy. As he prays to the Vaishnavas and to Guru and to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he's at that stage, that second stage. So now in the third pair, he has come to Nistha, or strong determination. Um, huh? Yeah, in this second prayer of Sikhsa Louder, Sikhsa, please. In the second prayer of Sikhsa this Anuraga means transcendental attachment. Right, so Nanuraga means none. Right. <laughs> Dordoivami. We always say, I have no attachment, but really, many of us are attached to chanting and to reading, but no transcendental attachment. Yes, no, yeah, we like to chant, or we like to, to, go the to go through the motions. And then, because then I can say at the end that I've gotten my rounds done, but we have no really taste for the name. So. I start lamenting, and that's when I start worrying that no tears are coming. And then I start paying more attention when I'm singing the bhajans. It has more reality for me. So this is the gradual anartha navritti, as Prajanath Prabhu mentioned yesterday. Or no, who was that? As, um, uh, yeah. As you mentioned, Madhu Smita Didi mentioned yesterday, Anarthas are still there in the later stages, but they're gradually getting less and less. So he's coming to Nista. Then comes the fourth pair of the Hare Krishna mantra, which is the fourth period in the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. And if you have the Bhajan Rahasya, oh by the way, uh, I just remembered, if the homework can be, is there a Bhajan Rahasya class tomorrow? Or Okay, so for tomorrow, if you have time, you can read the first couple of chapters. The first one we're already discussing, and you can review. But we're only up to verse 12. And there's like over 20 verses in the first chapter. So you can read more quickly through the verses of the first chapter. And if you can do the second chapter also, that's nice. So the fourth pair comes to the stage of Ruchi. 
in the gradual progression of bhakti. Ruchi means now taste is coming. Taste is still on the platform of intelligence. Even the, even the third stage, the stage of nista, no matter what happens, no matter how I'm feeling, I'm determined to do my fixed rounds of chanting and my fixed services and my archan, no matter how I feel, if I'm angry or if I'm upset or if any other obstacles or somebody tries to call me away from that. But it's with my intelligence. I don't feel like doing it, but I'm going to do it anyway. In the stage of taste, some taste comes. Thank you, Vasanti. This is marvelous. Vasanti just did a marvelous thing. <laughs> she went to the Xerox place and got Xerox copies. So who would like to give these out? And it, you'll be able to, I know it's very complex, the four and the three, and this correlates with that. So, Vajjanti Maladivi very kindly, many years ago, made this chart, which encompasses the entire book. So you could follow with me now. We're in the stage of Ruchi. Sorry? Oh, Chinata Pisunichana is the third stage. The third stage means we're back in the third stage. Yeah, Ruchi is three. Ruchi is... See, the, the thing is about this, there are different numbers. Like, for example, Ruchi is the fourth verse of Shikshastaka. But it's the third... All right, if we can all look at it together. Let's look at this together. It's Shikshastikam number one. Yeah. 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 Yes, thank you. I made a mistake. Right, so I made a mistake and I'm going to correct this. Thank you for that. So, in it's hard to follow the numbers. In the second chapter, Shikshastakam 2 corresponds to the first phrase of the first verse of Shikshastakam. And that corresponds to the three stages, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, and Anartha Navriti, so that he can gradually come to Nisna. It's continuous in the second. Yeah. So the first Hare Krishna, the first pair of names, is Radha and Krishna's first pastimes. It's the first stage of bhakti. It's the first verse of Shikshastikam, beginning the first verse of Shikshastikam. Then the second pair represents when Radha and Krishna go home up to the point where they're bathing, dressing, starting their breakfast, and that corresponds to Sadhu Sangha, 
for the Ajata Rati Sadak, Bhajana Kriya and Anartana Vritti. And that corresponds with Cheto Dharpana Marjana, because now in Sadhu Sangha, as he's developing freedom, starting to develop freedom from his anarthas, the dust from the mirror of his heart is gradually getting cleansed. If I want to look in the mirror and my mirror is full of dust, I can't see anything. When the dust is cleansed, I can see myself, I can see other people, and I can see the world around me. So this second stage, the second verse of the Shikshastakam, which is the second stage of bhakti, which includes three stages. It's including three stages, and it's called the first. Does that make sense? It's just lots of numbers that are overlapping each other. That's why there's difference of numbers. Right. And at the stage of Nista, when he's becoming very humble, he's following the verse. It's not only when Gurudev says following the verses of Sri Shikshastakam, he means following. That means that now he's becoming humble and he's starting. Real Trinadapi Sunichena doesn't come till Bhav Bhakti. As Madhu Smita Didi mentioned yesterday, every stage is in its early stages actually, in its own realm. That is Nista, in the stage of Nista, is not full nista. It's a como or beginning stage of nista. Because Haridas Thakur's nista, which is in Prem, is that I don't care if you cut me into a thousand pieces. I'll never give up the chanting of the holy name. Sometimes Gurudev gives Haridas Thakur as an example of nista. But his nista is full nista because it's in frame. Does that make sense? Yes. There is also two types of bhaktas or sadhakas we are discussing. In both types, they have a different quality of shraddha. Of that same thing. Different faith. quality of sadhi sangha, different right. quality of water and water. Right, thank you. So they have a different type of quality of trinodopi. Who is the most humble person Radharani. in all the scriptures? Radharani. Radharani. She's thinking that she's not qualified to be with Krishna, and if she attains his association, very rarely, it's only due to the great efforts of her associates. And at the same time, she has the shraddha or faith that if I do man, Krishna will fall at my feet all unlimited, apparently contradictory moods are within Srimati Radhika, who has the topmost frame. So, Trinadavi starts at the stage of Nista, which is the beginning of Nista, really. The time, that makes sense, right? Especially with the picture in front of us. So at that stage, one is beginning to be prepared, and this way we can know where we're at also. We're beginning to be prepared to offer all respects to others and not desire any for ourselves, any respects. When somebody um, criticizes us or abuses us, we're prepared to be 
more humble than a blade of grass who's been stepped on and doesn't pop up again. Or if a tree gets cut, it doesn't retaliate with a woodcutter. Rather, it offers its leaves and branches and shade to the woodcutter. So, Tarora Pi Shehishnuna. And the perfection is, again in Srimati Radhika, even if Krishna, like some other gopi better than me, Dhanavat Maharaj, some other gopi better than me, then I will go to her house and take her hand and bring her to Krishna. Because if Krishna's pleasure is to give me unhappiness by being with another gopi, and I know that, then that becomes my greatest pleasure. So that is a very good statement that the Jata Rati Sadak experiences those same moods as the Ajata Rati Sadak, but in its very fullest feature. Um, yes? The, uh, let me read the descriptions of the Ajata Rati Sadaka. These are very high uh, qualities for someone to read in this stuff. He's in Bob. He's in Bob already. No. He's following, just as the Jata Rati Sadak, you all know what that means, right? By now. He's following Rupa Manjari, the ideal character of Rupa Manjari. No. Get out of Radha's Kunj. He's following that ideal character and meditating on and actually having entered into the services of Radha and Krishna at the different times of the day under the guidance of Rati, uh, Rati and Rupa Manjari and the other gopis. Whereas the Ajata Rati Sadak, he's trying to seriously follow the ideal character of his Gurudev and the, his Gurudev's conduct it as says, it says not trying, well there's the degree again it's again it's all degree isn't it so there's the very beginning of Nista then as Nista is developing so his success in following depends on his development of Nista as he goes from the very beginning stage of Nista to the stage of Nista just before Ruchi comes. As we discussed yesterday, there are many, many multi-stages of each stage. So he's following to different degrees according to his degree of Nista, the character of pure devotees. For example, the pure devotees are renounced. So, Srila Gurudev said, his Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, refused to add salt to whatever prasadam came to him. As it came, it was prasadam, and he didn't consider the taste. So in Nista, one might follow that. I'm not tasting whether there's salt or not salt. I'm tasting that it's prasadam, and I'm happy with that. Or someone's renunciation, not wearing extravagant clothing, or not eating opulent food, or not collecting money, living very simply, not engaging in sense gratification. So the ideal character according to whether that ideal character is a householder. If he's a householder, he'll follow Srivas Thakur or the Pandavas. And if he's in the renounced order, he'll follow Raghunath Das Goswami or Rupa Goswami. If he's a householder, he'll engage his money in the way that Rupa Goswami did when he renounced. Such and such um, 
percentage for the family, such and such percentage for the brahmana, such and such percent percentage for my personal needs. And in the meantime, the jata rati sadak, that is the bhav sadak, he's remembering without imagination. I try to remember. I'm not even in the stage of nista. I'm not even at the stage of barely an art and a vritti. But yet, Gurudev told me, try to remember what, from what you've heard the Eightfold Pastimes as you're chanting. So I remember, but my conception of what Radharani looks like and how she's dressed is a totally different Radharani than the reality. I can look at the painting, which is also... Gurudev said, when I see the, um, the manjaris that you've painted, I see so many defects. But when I see the manjaris in my heart, I see no defects. You know, so from, a, from an us point of view, the paintings are done under Gurudev's guidance, but from where they're standing, it's a totally different ballgame. So when one reaches Bhav, that's when he can actually <laughs> successfully follow Krishna Smaram Janam Jasya, the three verses, or that verse and the next verse of that Srila Viswanath Chakravarti Thakur wrote in the characteristics or qualities of a Raganuga Bhakta. Now let's run to the fourth stage. The fourth... Oh, you tell me. You're the... You're the... No. Then that's it. Are there any questions? Fine with me. Any questions? One question. Yes. Uh, yesterday, yesterday, I think um, Pridhani Maharaj mentioned regarding anartha privriti. Uh, anartha nivriti. Uh, is there, uh, he, he suggested or he proposed that from the perspective of uh, aspiring sadhak, it might be more um, attractive to focus on artha praviti. Um, is there something in the literature of our um, Acharyas that focuses on that? Because when you are, uh, as a newcomer, when you are first confronted with this whole list of what you shouldn't and what you are doing, but that's not good, everything crumbles and you might not feel extremely inspired to even take the first step. So my question is, are there detailed procedures or suggestions or descriptions as how to develop those artas which we are aspiring for, which then by the <coughs> principle of higher taste automatically will take care of an artas. Does everybody understand not, the question? I have not, not really encountered, I'm not reading much so I I can't say for myself, that's why I'm asking. Is there some place one can look that, that this is being given, this perspective of really positive, um, inspiring, especially like, let's look from our cultural background, Christians with the Ten Commandments and you should and shouldn't, and even yoga people with the uh, Yam, Niyam. Um, many, my experiences, including myself to a certain degree, <laughs> it's difficult. If you focus on such a heap of nonsense you're confronted with within yourself. Because if I read this, I'm full of that, so there's no hope at all. I can't do, and I feel blocked, I can't do anything. But if I see, okay, there's this and this and this and this that you could do, you could uh, develop that after by that kind of priority, by that kind of um, activity or attitude, or, or uh, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Right, so in simple words, I think, tell me if I'm right, this question is, um, there's an art of vritti and art of pravriti. An art of vritti is the getting rid of things that are impediments, and art of pravriti is engaging in those positive things that will help me advance. So uh, he's asking that if we just concentrate on an art of vritti, 
all the things I shouldn't do, then I'll get discouraged and it's just a negative thing. Don't do this, don't do that. Right? Use your right hand. Don't use your left hand. Right? Um, so is there some books or places where we can learn about our property, the positive things to do? Is that the question? Well, I think the whole Bhajana Rahasya is for our property and many other books. And as one develops, Brahmavarma Chandrika is uh, how to get to, um, how to enter into Raghunuga Bhakti, and that's what this book is about too, gradually. And um, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Bindu also. And there are so many books of uh, the pastimes that we can read about and remember and repeat. Though we're not remembering them purely, um, Gurudev explained that although there's imagination involved in the neophyte sadhaka's attempt at remembering and repeating, because it's based on genuine hearing from the pure devotee, even that stage of imagination is bona fide and will lead gradually to the stage of reality. The reality comes when that reality descends at the stage of Baba Bhakti from the heart of the Ragavika Bhakta, Guru and Vaishnavas, into the heart of the Sadak. At that time, there's no imagination, and he's actually seeing, because his Siddhadeya has started to manifest, and he's seeing the thing, and he's seeing himself, his own soul within the pastimes. So all these books, so you say you're not a reader, may I suggest that you become a reader, and you'll see it all. You'll see all the art of Pravritis. Um, Gurudev was saying that um, if we're just meditating on Anarthas, he, and he pretended to be a person chanting Japa, meditating on the Anarthas, Anartha, 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 gradually you'll come to Nirvishesh Brahm, and you'll have nothing positive, just everything is zero. Get rid of everything, neti neti. So yes, you're right, let's concentrate. We should know the things that we're not supposed to do also, but also the unlimited things we're supposed to do. And that's what that's what um, Gurudev and Shula Bhaktivinoda Thakur is mentioning, that as one comes to Nista, he's now starting to be able to follow the, um, the pure devotees, chanting a fixed number of rounds. He's increasing his number of rounds, or proper way of offering foodstuffs with proper meditations. For example, when doing arti, okay, six times around the feet, one, two, three, four. Or how many times do I fan with the chamara? And then I'm counting my chamara counting. And Krishna's thinking, I'm hungry and this guy's doing exercises, doing the chamara for 15 minutes. I'm leaving. So rather, when one wants to do more on arta praviti, arta praviti, then as he's doing arti, he's meditating on the arti that Mother Yasoda does when Krishna comes home in the afternoon. And she's trying to see, are there any scratch marks that those naughty boys made Krishna have by playing roughly in the bushes? And then she wipes them away with the water. So I'm going to end here on that happy note of arta praviti, and we'll see you tomorrow at 10.45. Okay, so now there's Arti, and then... Yeah, I want to say one more thing. Okay. Srila Gurudev is telling that by, only by Sadhu Sangha, we will start to engage in Artha Pravriti. If we think we have Sadhu Sangha, but we are not discussing the beautiful yeah, qualities, the deep meaning of the names and pastimes of Sisi Radha and Krishna, or maybe we are discussing them, but still we are always troubled by anathas, thinking about them. Then there is something wrong in our Sadhu Sangha or something wrong in us. And then we have to do some uh, correction with the help of yeah, those we have full faith in. Prayers to see Guru Parapatma and confidential exchanges with the devotees who are more advanced. They will help us to be focused on the path, situated properly. That is why we invite you here, so we can ask you how we can make progress. Thank you. Is everybody having fun in this class? Mm -hmm. Learning? I'm learning.
Krishna, 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 Krishna,